I don't know that this day could have come uh, soon enough. You know, we're anxious to get the first competition underway and um, the energy and the excitement of going to different preseason practices, uh, whether it's football or volleyball or soccer. And um, it, gets you, it gets you really excited about the upcoming season. And I know that our teams across the board are working incredibly hard and very focused on, you know, being more competitive and uh, really looking forward to their upcoming season. So I appreciate you uh, covering, uh, you know, our 19 teams and um, the importance of them being competitive across the board is, is part of our message about the importance of comprehensive excellence at Pitt. Um, every one of our teams matter and everyone in this athletic department plays a role in their success. So it's not just about our head coaches and our student athletes, it's about you know, our marketing team and our development staff and our strength conditioning coaches um, that all have a direct impact on the success of our student athletes. So um, certainly excited about the upcoming season and, and welcome any questions that you may have. There's a difficult to, to try to keep up with some of the ACC programs and other sports because they've been at it a little longer than maybe you have certain sports. Uh, you know, I, I, they, they haven't been at it, but yeah, they have had more sustained long-term success than us. Um, I don't think it's difficult. I think it's um, a matter of focusing on it and um, determining what our teams need in order to be successful. Again, um, it does not. It is not all about the head coach and the student athletes. There's a lot that has to do with the entire support system behind our programs, and it's a matter of people. It's a matter of facilities. It's a matter of a commitment to being good across the board. And so, those are some of the things that we're um, spending time dissecting and trying to figure out how to enhance their level of competitiveness and what they need to be more successful. Early in the process, in terms of assessing facilities on campus, I know you said that you guys are, you know, re-engaging the the firm that you guys worked with previously. Yes, yes we are, and um, you know, we are in the middle of that process right now, and there's uh, a very clear vision on where we need to improve from a facility standpoint for those particular teams. Sixteen of our 19 teams train, compete, and work out up on the hill. And that's 84% of our student athletes. So there's a significant number of kids that work out in facilities that are not as competitive and, and up to maybe ACC level standards as they, as they could be. And so that'll be a big focus and a primary focus for us as we move forward. And the opportunity to work collaboratively with campus is something that's been really enlightening and, and very helpful because um, you can't do it alone, and you've got to have a shared vision with our university, and um, certainly the chancellor and our team, you know, the senior leadership team are working very collaboratively on that vision. You, uh, were, you were talking there, Heather, about that idea of, uh, of, comprehensive, uh, of comprehensive excellence, um, you know, and when you look at some of the sports beyond football and, and, uh, and men's and women's basketball, there have been some teams and programs that since the move to the ACC came have been struggling, you know, you know, uh, quite a bit, big step up in competition. You know, there are some sort of built-in uh, disadvantages. Um, what do you feel like are some tangible steps that that can be taken to improve the, the quality of those programs that have maybe flattened a little bit here in the past few years or, or have even for longer than that? You know, I think that we are headed in the right direction, which it starts with assessing and building relationships with your coaching staff and knowing what they want and need to be successful, to be more successful. And um, so we're undergoing that process right now and trying to identify, you know, specific areas of improvement. We, you know, for example, we hired a new head of strength and conditioning for that whole group of student athletes that could, uh, you know, a student uh, uh, a person named Tyler Carpenter, who is a dynamic leader, and I think will make a direct impact on the strength conditioning, the the performance um, of many of those teams, and the team that he's building within that organization and the style. So, um, there are steps that you can take. Um, you know, I've, I think a lot of the coaches have great aspirations and. Um, are very focused on improving the program. Again, you've got to do it progressively. You know, there's not a, 
a, a quick fix. Um, it's recruiting the right students to Pitt and, and the kids that want to win championships. Um, you know, one of our core values and bridges that, you know, we haven't talked a whole lot about yet publicly, but one of our core values is champions live here. You know, this is the city of champions, and it's not the city of professional champions, it's the city of champions. So it starts with a belief system that if you come to Pitt, you want to win a championship. You know, you want to win ACC championships, you want to compete for national championships. So if that's not why you're here, um, from a competitive standpoint, certainly there's academic and personal and, and, and social development opportunities. But from an athletic standpoint, if you're not here to win a championship, you're probably not in the right place. Um, so champions live here is what, you know, one of our themes that we're going to talk more at length about with our staff, with our coaches, and, and certainly with our student athletes. But that's, that's critical to establish a belief system. And you got to believe that you can win before it's actually going to happen. And so I, I feel very good about the coaches wanting it to happen, believing that it can happen, and then we've got to help them um, identify the steps to help that make, make that happen. What were some of the biggest concerns your coaches had when you first met them when you got the coaches of these other sports? when you first met them when you got here in the spring? Um, I, I guess overall themes are probably, you know, from a facility standpoint, there were not, it, there are some deficiencies. There's some gaps in, you know, either um, just the ability to enhance our facilities. Is that it's, it's more of an opportunity than a concern. You know, I think that there's a way to do it. Um, you just have to have a vision and, and get people engaged and excited about doing it and then work with your campus to make it happen. So, so I, 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 I think of it as an op opportunity more than, you know, real challenges that they felt that, you know, these, these are insurmountable things as to why you can't do it. It's all about how can you do it. As, you know, as a part of the, uh, str as the, the strategic plan that uh, Scott Barnes and Penn have put together in his time here, you know, there was uh, one part where you talked about, by, I, I forgot what year it was, it might have been 2019 or 2020, about every program being in the top 10% or top 15% of the Director's Cup standings. Mm -hmm. Is that a sort of standard that you're, you know, that you're maybe looking to kind of push forward with or, or try to uphold? Or do you have some different goals and different ways of trying to go about that? Um, well, our staff and our team has focused, um, you know, we, we've created a mission, which is kind of our script. We've created some core values, which are our bridges. And then we've created a game plan. And our game plan is focused on this upcoming academic year. Um, you certainly can have three and five year plans, but the landscape changes and things change. So we've taken a look at what can we do this coming academic year to improve our overall competitiveness from a, um, from a director's cup standpoint. And, um, you know, we have set some goals and, uh, you know, we will work hard to obtain those and, and work hard to make everyone and every pit fan proud and every pit alum proud. But, um, so I, I don't, I'm not familiar. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar. I read the, the, the other plan, but um, we have kind of redesigned and tweaked it to make it, you know, I think it's good to have an annual, very quantifiable, very objective um, plan for all of our team to be kind of singing from the same game plan. What are some of the other ways you guys have kind of tweaked that overall plan, maybe in some different areas beyond the question I'd asked earlier? Um, yeah, again, I think there's, I don't know how that one was developed, but I'll tell you how this one was developed. Um, you know, our game plan is developed with our leadership, senior leadership team, and they ultimately went to their staff and said, okay, what are the quantifiable goals and objectives we want to achieve this coming year? And so we compiled those into, um, you know, three areas, either, you know, building champions and, and building leaders. And, and so, you know, they fit into to areas that are very distinct. And um, again, it's a document and it's a one page. All, everything's on one page. You know, it's not a coffee table book that looks good, but you don't utilize it. It's a very, it's a, it's a tool and it's a resource that we will, um, our leadership team will address probably quarterly at the very least. And some of our staff I've heard, you know, are, are talking about it in their staff meetings every other week um, because it's, a, you know, again, a quantifiable document and say, okay, how are we coming on these particular goals? Where are we in the process? So, but it, it is a, um, 
at least on a quarterly basis throughout the year, we will take a look at our game plan, see what we're doing, see what we've accomplished, see what roadblocks we're hitting, help one another accomplish the goals that we've all set out. Um, but people are very familiar with it um, on our leadership team, and, and um, it, it's a really good guiding tool for us this coming year, I think. So many things in college athletics when you're trying to build up a team. You know, I think a lot of people would say, well, you know, if I had more fans and we had more people in the seats and we had more donors, then I could do a lot of things and have a lot better team. But a lot of times it's hard to get those things without the better team. It becomes like a chicken and an egg game. What are some of the things that you can do as an athletic director to build enthusiasm for these smaller programs and, and in, you know, regardless of the fact that you know, they haven't had a lot of success? Yeah, it, it, it is a chicken and an egg. Um, but I do think that successful programs and people that get to know, I think we have to humanize our coaches and our student athletes. People want to know who they are. You know, you typically go to a game because um, you're, you're connected to somebody, a part of the program. You either know the coach or you're, you, you read about them and they're interesting and inspiring to you. Um, or, or you just have a real strong affinity for the sport and, and then you get to know our, our student athletes. And once you get to know the quality of the kids that we have in our program, um, you know, I've been really incredibly impressed. So I think that that's one way, first of all, telling the story in, and that's what you all are doing, which we certainly appreciate um, because it gets, it allows people the opportunity to get to know who's, who is competing at Pitt, you know, who is the star on the, volleyball program or the men's soccer team or the, you know, uh, you know, wrestling team this, this winter. And, um, so there's a way that that gets people excited. Um, you know, there's, we're doing it, we're going to unveil something to our student athletes, uh, next Monday night, I think it is, um, when we have our all student athlete meeting, something called Panthers Unite. And it's a very, it'll be for our staff and our student athletes. So every head coach went through and designated a game on their schedule that their that is their Panthers Unite game. And that's a game that we're going to encourage all staff and all student athletes to go. You can't, I mean, you know, I can't expect everybody to go to every single, you know, volleyball game this fall or every single soccer game. But if there's one game in general that is going to be a difference maker and how we can help that team, you know, maybe overcome, you know, a, a crowd advantage or, or that sort of thing. So, you know, we're going to encourage everybody to come to that Panthers Unite game and you'll see the shirts that the kids are wearing um, with the schedule of the games on the back of them that will outline uh, where we want them to be and when. But, you know, having a sense of, um, support across our 19 teams, you know, building a culture where it's not just one program being good, but it, they, they, success breeds success, you know, it becomes infectious, it's contagious. And so as one team improves, I think it helps raise the standard across the board, especially when you try to create a united environment. And that's what we're going to try to do with the Panthers Unite concept. How big of uh, an addition is, I mean, the ACC network launching in 2019, how big is that going to be for, in terms of just bringing in additional revenue to be able to accomplish all that you want to accomplish as an athletic director? Yeah, I mean, the ACC network is, is going to be a new source of revenue, which will certainly enhance our overall student athlete experience and allow us to invest in some priorities and, and needs that, um, you know, will be new and op opportunistic. Um, and it creates, you know, just tremendous exposure for our campus, for our university, for all the teams competing, um, for student athletes and, and pit fans to see our teams competing across the country or around the world. You know, they can do it online now, but on a real platform, I think it's going to really make a significant difference in the overall exposure of our campus and of our teams and of the pit brand. With, uh, with the ACC network, Heather, what are some of the infrastructural steps Pitt's taken to kind of prepare itself for when it does launch? Yeah, the ACC network is a big undertaking. Um, we have a, you know, university-wide committee that's working together um, and collaboratively across campus because it involves a lot of different um, elements and, and aspects. So um, we have definitely begun... We're far along in the planning process. Um, you know, we have designated sort of back of house space and, and what the infrastructure needs to be um, in order for us to get a network studio up and running. Um, there's personnel expenses, there's infrastructure, there's obviously equipment. 
and um, we're very, working very diligently to identify the best ways to, to go about launching our studio and our network area and space here at Pitt. Um, we benchmark with a lot of other schools in the country that have their own um, set up and some within our conference that are already, you know, very, you know, a little bit um, more uh, further along the on the way than we are. But um, I would say that we are in good, making great progress with where we need to be. Really, by the by the next fall, we need to be prepared and ready to go. Obviously, it won't go live until the fall of 19, but um, we'll be up and running and and ready to go in in the fall of 18. When it comes to football, I mean, what's it been like? That you, I know it hasn't been long since the deal was announced, but working with tailgate guys, I mean, there's probably not a whole lot you could do for 2017, but for the future, I mean, what are their, what's that process been like? Um, yeah, no, tailgate guys is, a, is, is an excellent opportunity, I think, for our fans to experience a new pregame game day experience. Um, it's convenient. It's... Um, very uh, available for our fans to be able to come down to Heinz Field. There's a designated space on the Great Lawn and um, to have pit branded tents all across that area where people can come and they connect with tailgate guys. And basically how it is, is it's a, you know, tailgate service for you. And you can say, I'm going to have 10 people. I'm going to have 50 people. I'm going to have 100 people at my tailgate. <laughs> And I would like these amenities, a tent, tables, chairs, televisions, coolers, food. I mean, it, it's sort of a menu option. Um, and uh, there'll be a pit package that they're developing. Um, the sales are going extremely well. I mean, it, it will, I think it will catch on. I think it will be a neat place to come. I think it's very convenient for our fans. You don't have to move your kitchen downtown to Heinz Field. Um, you basically show up and, and you have a designated place. And, and hopefully, I, I think it's, it'll create an exciting game day, pregame atmosphere for um, people to come and enjoy and, and spend, the, spend the day. How were season ticket renewals for football from last year to, to this year? You know, I haven't gotten a specific update, but I know that I just got out of a budget meeting and things are running on target with what we have projected financially. Um, so that's great. I want to thank, um, you know, all of our loyal pit fans and, and season ticket holders. And, um, you know, I just would say that everybody I have met is excited about the upcoming season and um, people are incredibly loyal and, um, you know, proud to be, you know, I've been a season ticket holder, Heather, for the last X number of years. And, and um, those are great conversations to have. And, and we certainly appreciate um, their support. And I know our football team does too, you know, packing Heinz Field, making that an electric game day experience is critical to our success. And so um, we encourage you to come out, bring your fa family, bring your friends, and, and hopefully um, enjoy the experience of, of, you know, football at the highest level. You know, in your first five months here on the job, uh, Heather, has there been, or I guess what's maybe surprised you the most, what's, you know, what expectations that you had going into it have maybe proven to be different or wrong? Is there anything that's kind of... You know, a, a, has there been anything that I guess that surprised you about the, the job five months into it being here? Um, what is surprise? You know, I, I didn't know I would meet people who were so passionate. I mean, I knew I'd meet people who were passionate about Pittsburgh, right? And um, and there's not a lot. I mean, there's a lot to love about this city. I think it has everything that a big city has. Um, and, and wants, except for the fact that it has a lot of warm, welcoming people that sometimes you don't get in a really large city. And so um, I've been pleasantly surprised at the fact that the city is, is incredibly welcoming. Um, but I think I've been surprised at the number of, of Pitt alums that, you know, you meet and you get a chance to meet. And, um, you know, whether I was at downtown at a bocce tournament last weekend and, you know, I mean, people just coming up to me, oh, I've been a Pitt fan. Oh, I played tennis there. Oh, I ran track there. I mean, you know, there's just a lot of um, passion and pride in, in, in the University of Pittsburgh within the city. And so um, I don't know that I'm surprised about that, but it's been it's been very outward, an outward expression of it, and it's, it's been very warm and welcoming. So I've ple been pleasantly surprised at, at that piece. 
I guess aside from the general enthusiasm, um, when you speak with with the fans, we speak with these kind of people who you have been, as you said, season ticket holders since God knows when. Um, what's been the general tenor of those kind of conversations? What do they sort of want to express to you? What uh, any concerns? Anything with that? Okay, like, hey, you really need to do this or try to get this done. Um, you know, I think the general concerns. Um, would be, um, we want you to stay. Um, and, you know, I think that there's that feeling of, um, you know, I, and I recognize that there has been transition. Um, but I want people to realize that this is an athletic department where the culture of being the best that you can possibly be and going and competing for ACC and national championships is attainable at Pitt. So this is not a, des you know, a, a, a stepping stone. It can be and should be a destination place for our coaches, for our staff, for our student athletes to, you know, to our staff to grow and develop. Um, you know, we want them to, to um, know that their aspirations of, of what they want to achieve can happen here at Pitt. So um, that's probably the, been the biggest concern that people say, you know, oh, keeping your coaches. And I, I see that as a, as a priority. And... Um, and also an incredible opportunity to do that.